reciting the Qur'an is a ibadah, or an act of worship, which is something like prayer, for example, which requires that you do it in a certain way, otherwise it will not be accepted. You can't just simply pray Fajr whenever you want or however you want. You must follow certain steps and guidelines. That's why Qur'an recitation as ibadah requires that you follow certain guidelines for it to be accepted insha'Allah. Here are the four conditions to follow so that your Qur'an recitation is accepted insha'Allah. All four are very important, but the last one is the one that most people overlook, so watch till the end. First, and most importantly, intention. Although this is the easiest thing to do, it is also the easiest thing to overlook or kind of mess up. Especially when you do a certain ibadah for a long time, the intention behind it may start to fade or even change. So renewing your intention and reminding yourself with it is too important. But what should your intention be? Well, your intention should be that your recitation is purely for the sake of Allah. So for nothing or no one else. Only Allah. And now some might be thinking, well, that's pretty easy. How can anyone miss this? Well, in many ways. Like, for example, someone would say, because I have a nice voice and I want to use it. Or show off your tajweed or knowledge about the Qur'an. Or you want to recite the Qur'an in people's gatherings and make some money. Or you want to impress those praying behind you with your recitation. And other sort of intentions where Allah is not the only one you seek. So your intention should not be for Allah and or something else. But must only be for the sake of Allah. Instead, your intention could be to ponder over the word of Allah because reciting the Qur'an is a ibadah and I want to worship Allah because you want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, because you want to go to Jannah or you're afraid of Jahannam or just simply because you love the Qur'an. And these are just examples for the intention that you might have for your recitation to be accepted insha'Allah. And remember, Intention is in your heart, and it is not something that you speak out or say out loud. Condition number two, reciting the Qur'an properly using the Tajweed. What we mean here is the basic Tajweed, which means pronouncing every letter properly from its proper makhraj with correct Tashkil that does not change the meaning of the Ayat. Using other tajweed rules like nun sakina, qalqala, and other rules make your recitation closer to the sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And remember what Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The one who is proficient in the recitation of the Qur'an will be with the honorable and obedient scribes. And he who recites the Qur'an and finds it difficult to recite, doing his best to recite in the best way possible, will have two rewards. So the better you are at reciting the Qur'an, the greater the reward. And even if you are still learning and your tajweed is not perfect, but you are doing your best, you will have a great reward as well. And with the will of Allah, you will perfect your recitation. Condition number three. Beautify your voice. Our Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, told us to make our voices beautiful when reciting the Qur'an. Naturally, not everyone has a beautiful voice or the voice of Shaykh al husari for example. But the intended meaning here is to recite the Qur'an with the most beautiful voice you have, without exaggeration or singing the ayat. And that's very important. And in another less known but an authentic hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he elaborates on another aspect of what beautiful voice is when reciting the Qur'an. He said, Among the people who recite the Qur'an with the most beautiful voices is the man who, when you hear him, you think that he fears Allah. So beautifying your voice is for everyone not just for those who have a certain specific gift. Now, condition number four. 
applying tartil, which has two aspects to it. For one, it refers to the speed of recitation that is not too fast to the point that if someone is listening to you, they wouldn't understand what you are reciting. So your recitation has to make sense and to be understood. It should not be too fast to the point that you can't make words out from each other. But the other aspect of tartil also implies moving your lips and reciting with a voice that you at least can hear. So reciting the Qur'an is with a voice that you at least can hear, not just by reading with your eyes. But what if I want to recite without moving my lips just by looking at the mushaf? Is that allowed? Or do you get rewarded for that? Well, yes, of course. In reciting the Qur'an, we differentiate between two things. Qira'atu tartil and Qira'atu tadabbur. The first one, Qira'atu tartil, is the one we just talked about. Reciting the Qur'an with a voice. And the second one, Qira'atu tadabbur, is the act of just looking at the Mus'haf and pondering over its ayat by looking at its words and thinking about them. And that is also something that we are rewarded for. But not the type of recitation that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, meant when he said, Whoever recites a letter from the Book of Allah, he will be credited with a good deed, and a good deed gets a tenfold reward. I don't say Alif Lam Mim is one letter, but Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Mim is a letter. So with this he means reciting the Qur'an as we indicated earlier with a voice that you at least can hear. So both cases are actually good. When you recite the Qur'an with your eyes, you get rewarded, insha'Allah. And when you recite the Qur'an with your lips, you get rewarded as well, insha'Allah. So next time you open your Mus'haf, hopefully right after this video, remember, renew your intention and direct it towards Allah alone. Follow the sunnah by reciting correctly with a beautiful voice and using tartil. And insha'Allah, your recitation will be accepted and heavily rewarded. Thanks for watching. If you want to start reading and understanding the Quran in Arabic, then you should start your journey right here. And don't forget to check out my latest book, which goes perfectly with this free course. I'll leave the links for all of them in the description, so check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.